Hey guys, Joey here, and in today's video, I'm gonna talk about multiband compression. This is a style of compression that splits audio into separate frequency bands and compresses them independently. They're used to solve frequency specific dynamic issues. If you've got overly dynamic subs or an inconsistent high end, pay attention to the techniques used here. There's a lot of uses for multiband compression in today's workflow. Side chaining, DSing, and low end control are the most common applications. There's a lot to explain, so let's get right into it. Let's start with DSing. DSers mostly come in two styles, wideband and split band. They both use a key frequency, which is a narrow band that the compressor listens to. It's usually somewhere between five to 9,000 Hertz. When this key frequency goes past a threshold, sometimes predefined and sometimes user defined, the volume is reduced. In a wideband DSer, the entire signal is reduced when this threshold is passed. And with the split band, only the high end is attenuated. Split band DSing is a simple multiband compressor since only the high end is being reduced and the rest of the signal is left alone. I usually use gain reduction two on the individual tracks to control the loudness and cut the S's. Then I put a multiband compressor on the vocal bus to do the heavy lifting. And I tend to set that one somewhere around 6K. This keeps the air and the body of the vocal untouched and only clamps down on the sibilants. Multiband is useful for controlling the low end of vocals too. A band from 100 to 250 hertz can reduce the impact of P and B sounds if a vocalist recorded without a pop filter. These sounds are called plosives and they sound like this. Now check out how much cleaner the vocal is with a little bit of low end compression. I use the same kind of compression all the time on guitars. Palm mutes have a lot of low frequency information which can make any compression or limiting on a bus overreact to those same palm mutes rather than the entire signal itself. Check out these palm mutes on an analyzer. Now look at how much more even they are after controlling the low end. This process is included in the JW Bus Glue guitar plugin. It's also in Toneforge Jason Richardson and Toneforge Jeff Loomis. Multiband compression is also used to sidechain the kick and bass guitar in a mix. The idea is that the kick signal is sent to the bass, and every time that the kick hits, the low end of the bass is reduced. This lets the low end of the kick be the focus, but keeps the transient information of the bass consistent. I usually set the crossover somewhere around 60 Hz. That keeps some of the thump and the bass unaffected. This process is done to control the sub information, so the 70 to 120 Hz area isn't always included in the sidechain. Multiband compression is awesome for controlling the dynamics of a full mix. If the sub information is too dynamic across the kick, bass, and post-production, a low band compressor is great for keeping it consistent. A mid band compression is great for keeping the vocals and snare in check. And the high band is effective for keeping the presence of the vocals and cymbals audible without unpredictably peaking. Okay, so I see the kick and snare are driving the bus compressor really hard. I'm hearing compression artifacts on the cymbals that I don't want. If I want more transparency from the bus compression, I've got to tame these hits. I'm going to set a more subtle reduction on the lowest frequencies so the low end doesn't disappear every time the kick hits. I want the mid-range to duck a little harder during that snare transient, then I want it to return immediately. For the top end, I want less reduction with a longer release. Awesome, now the mix compressor is reacting to the entire song rather than just the drum transients. One feature that most multi-band compression plugins are going to have that most other compressors won't is a linear phase mode. This is because the frequency spectrum has to be split with filters, and anytime filters are being used, there's a potential to create some phase cancellation. Linear phase makes sure that no cancellations are happening by temporarily offsetting that phase. 
This process uses a lot of processing power from the CPU and can cause artifacts before a note. Honestly, it's splitting hairs at this point. Whether you're using linear phase or minimum phase, it doesn't really matter as long as you're not making something like a super narrow Q adjustment with a high gain amount. And that's it. Multiband compression is a really powerful tool when used correctly, and it can easily clean up a source. They're used for a clinical approach to dynamic control, so don't expect to use them anywhere that you wanna add vibe or color. And lastly, make sure you're not overdoing any one band. Listen to how each move affects the entire frequency spectrum, not just the one that you're working with. Do you use multiband compression in your mixes? What problems do they help you solve? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and if you like this video, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check the links in the description below and tap that bell to get notified whenever we upload new videos. Until next time, happy mixing.